Sanskrit. So Sanskrit is older as a language, but newer as a language of transmission of Buddhist texts. There's something interestingly backward about what happened language-wise in the history of Indian Buddhism. So what I'm going to be talking about at the beginning of this talk are these um, offspring languages of Sanskrit, different types of Prakrits that were spoken in different parts of India. We can actually obtain some concrete information about what they were like from the inscriptions of King Ashoka, who had messages to his subjects, uh, PR pieces, you could say, uh, carved on stone and erected throughout his realm. They are in a variety of Prakrits. One of the most invaluable legacies of King Ashoka is that his inscriptions have allowed scholars to map out the variety of different Prakrits spoken in the, on the Indian subcontinent during his time. So just staying with northern India, which is the area we're concerned with right now, it's possible to distinguish the linguistic and phonological features of eastern versus western Prakrits in the middle of the third century. So back to my Theravadan friends. Where does Pali fit into this picture? It's certainly to be classified as one of the many Middle Indic languages. And thus, in a certain sense, it's a Prakrit. But when we map Pali onto the picture provided by the Ashokan inscriptions, we, uh, or whether, rather uh, Indological specialists, discover something very peculiar. For Pali does not fit the normal profile of an ordinary Prakrit. Instead, as the great Pali scholar Oscar von Neuber has shown, it exhibits a mixture of Eastern and Western features, including some terminology that's thought to go back to old Magadhi itself, even older language. The majority of, of the characteristics of Pali, in fact, line up with the, what we know from the inscriptions would be Western Prakrits, not Eastern. And this already would call into question whether it was anything close to the language the Buddha spoke, since the Buddha lived and taught in the eastern part of this region. It's clear that it was not the language the Buddha spoke. But not only did the Buddha not speak Pali, no one spoke Pali. <laughs> Pali is, as von Hinnuber calls it, an artificial language cobbled together from a variety of spoken languages to come up with what von Hindeber called, I'm not sure it was the best choice, uh, but he called it a lingua franca for the purpose of disseminating Buddhist teachings across dialectal or perhaps uh, language lines. So it's a, co 